Hello and welcome to another episode of GM Talks where we will discuss prophylaxis in chess. Basically preventing the opponent's idea before they even had the chance to carry it out. Prophylaxis in chess is a very essential element of chess strategy and today I'm gonna try to explain it so everybody understands it. So after the next 20 minutes you will be able to use prophylaxis in chess. Uh, and actually, you probably already use it. Uh, there are a lot of openings where uh, the prophylaxis is an essential part of the game. We're going to use the latest world championship uh, match game between uh, Ian Nepomuchi and Ding Liran. Um, it was uh, match game number 13. And uh, if one of them had won, they had a very, very good chance of becoming the next world champion. Okay, let's get going here. Uh, white starts with E4. Uh, this is uh, one of the main moves, e4 and d4, e5, uh, also taking a, sta uh, a stake in the center, attacking uh, the pawn here, uh, and defending the pawn here, uh, attacking the knight, that's defending the pawn, uh, and well, black doesn't care about that. If you are new to chess, then you say, what about the pawn? And the problem is, for instance, something like this. Um, then queen d4 attacks both the knight and the, uh, the pawn. And black will get his pawn or her pawn back with a good position and the bishop pair. The bishop pair is these two guys. That is, uh, and it's considered an advantage to have two bishops okay so the main move is bishop a4 just keeping the tension keeping the pressure on knight uh, here attacking this pawn uh, white ignores it all this is well-known opening theory uh, black can uh, white can black can take it that that is the open spanish uh, this is uh, the Rai Lopez opening. Instead, uh, bishop e7 is also considered to be a good move, uh, main move. And here, uh, the, the main line for many years was uh, rook e1. But in this World Championship match, uh, Nepomuchi has preferred d3, uh, just uh, protecting the pawn. And now this might be a threat, uh, or it is a threat. So white is now actually threatening to take this one. And, and afterwards this one, because e4 is protected. So black has to do something. He can play d6, or he can push the bishop back immediately. So he had to prevent losing a pawn here. We're already using prophylaxis. Bishop goes back, uh, d6, just uh, getting ready to have the bishop out, um, over protecting the pawn, and so on. And actually this creates a minor threat uh, it creates a threat of knight a5 um, winning the bishop pair and winning uh, is because to have the bishop pair is actually a slight material advantage uh, and this is as i have uh, said in an earlier video this is white's uh, good spanish bishops it's uh, can often uh, launch an attack on sometimes also on this diagonal and it has a big influence on the center. So this is White's pride and joy, and he will do his utmost to keep it. In the earlier match, uh, where he had played a3, but c3 is, of course, also a natural move, uh, getting ready to prepare for, for d4 and black uh, white cas uh, castle. Here, uh, if, if white goes d4, then he's a tempo down on a, a known line and, and bishop will go to d4, d4. For instance, something like this. Please notice that this pawn is not uh, takeable because of this, and we have some problems. And I will switch off the evolutions and the lines so I don't get confused. We are most interested in ideas here. Uh, but after d4, black will play this move pinning the knight and putting pressure on uh, the d4 pawn and this uh, is actually a known line where white is a clear tempo down the rook is usually on e1 so a3 makes a lot of sense that is a prophylactic move uh, the, we know that this uh, white's plan is to to play d4 at some point and 
black would like to uh, pin the knight uh, immediately with uh, bishop d4 so white prevents it with a3 so this is a prophylactic move it, it, and of course it's become second nature for everybody to just play a3 but it is a prophylactic move and we will see more of, of, of that. Okay, so now the bishop can no longer go here. Uh, he, he could also go here, uh, but it's a bit clumsy in this situation. Sometimes with default common temple, you may not want to have uh, an, a, a weak pawn on, on e6. So bishop b7 is sort of logical with the pawn gone to a3. But it's also a prophylactic move uh, because we know that white's plan is to go d4. So black puts a lot of pressure on e4 to prevent d4 and making it harder to play. And here comes, a, I think, more or less new move, uh, never played on the highest level, bishop e3, uh, a confusing move. But you can see that it's it's not it cannot be uh, be attacked with bishop knight d4 due to the pawn here. So it makes some sense. Knight a5. Uh, and 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 this is um, well. If White is allowed to uh, to 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 continue his his, his game, he will play uh, Knight D2, preventing E4, uh, pr protecting E4 and D4, and 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 probably something with Bishop down here, having um, move that one, having a, a, a slight space advantage, and gradually hoping to to get some initiative going, maybe on the king side. Knight a5 uh, looks weird, pushes the bishop back, but the idea is to play c5, uh, getting more uh, power towards this one. We also see that we have a lot of power to this one here. Um, and white uh, continue preparing uh, the, the d4 move. Uh, and we can see that with, with, with this a lot of pieces here. Black cannot prevent it, but he can put on a lot of uh, pressure on e4. So he continues that. Rook e8. Um, very uh, natural move. and But that's also a prophylactic move. You're ready for uh, for this one. And also you want to get your bishop out of the way. It's a bit clumsy on uh, f8, but it's a potential strong piece. So you might, uh, you don't want to exchange it or something. Also uh, with rook e8, um, it, it's uh, it's a natural uh, ring regrouping. You could have sometimes uh, play and put the bishop on g7, having a very harmonious setup. A4. Um, in order to get the bishop uh, to not put pressure on black's position, he had to play a6 and b5, and that is potentially weakening here. Here, black plays another uh, prophylactic move. H6. Uh, and you and uh, don't don't get this idea that uh, that all the sort of uh, moves with the rook pawn is is prophylactic. That's not the case. But here uh, it is uh, taking away uh, this square for white's pieces, uh, and and that is sometimes it can be a knight when you can attack here. Or, or maybe down here. Uh, other times it can be a bishop um, putting, uh, getting a bigger influence in, in the center. So it makes some sense. But it can also be weakening to play h6. And it does may mean that this plan of bishop f8 and d6 is slightly uh, worse uh, because now the, the, the setup is a, is a little bit worse. Here, uh, a natural move for white would be something like rook e1. Um, but I don't know. It doesn't look like uh, black's position looks very harmonious. Uh, Nepomuchi decides to go d4 here. So he has put, uh, overprotected uh, the pawn here, uh, or protected it, so he can play d4. This was the plan. Uh, and black takes, takes a knight here. Um, and we see that in general, uh, when, when this happens, uh, it's very interesting. One of the Important thing is if black can push d5 or not, because he might be left with a weak pawn here. Uh, also, white is very much hoping to be able to launch an attack, maybe something here, and queen here, and attack here, and we can see h6 might be, uh, be, be weak. Um, black is hoping to put a lot of pressure on this one. 
here and and at the moment this knight here is a wee bit out of the game but it comes in here knight c4 um, and that's a very annoying for white to be honest uh, if, if black did not have this move if for instance uh, here he had to play something like this uh, Say we play something like this, then white is is better. He will he will play knight f5 and bishop d4 and stuff like that. Queen f3. He will start an attack on on uh, on the king side, and uh, we would definitely be be happy with uh, with white's position. Or you could just play rook e1 or something. For instance, something like this uh, here in order to to meet d5 with e5, and this is definitely what white usually wants. In general, white is a little bit clumsy in the Spanish or Rao Lopez. So when d5 comes, you really want to have e5 getting a space advantage on the king side and hopefully a king side attack in the making. But black did have this nice move uh, and well, you could win a pawn or something, but it will be a horrible win. Well, actually queen b6 will get it back. So if you try to go for the pawn, you play something like this, right? and. I just take back and uh, and after something like this, uh, queen b6 is clear that black's position is excellent. Uh, these things here are all weak and uh, all black's pieces look uh, strong. There are some dark squares that might make this bishop very strong in the future. So I would be very unhappy with, with white in this uh, position. Uh, so that's not a good idea. So you have to take. You have to take the knight, and uh, and thereby uh, Black succeeded in exchanging one piece here for the knight, uh, one of the defenders of e4. So now Black is threatening uh, the pawn here, and uh, and White defends it, and uh, that's really don't not what you want. Uh, and Bishop here, and maybe you should play something like bishop f4 but then queen b6 might be annoying uh, anyway it's it's clear it's uh, that that why black is is really in a good shape here because this pawn that sometimes is weak is not weak here uh, and and this pawn is weak and and the thing is the the potential spanish bishop the strong bishop here is is not going to get any attack soon uh, so so here uh, black is, is is clearly in the driving seat um, and because also he will be able to carry out d5 and black uh, you would really love to have some prophylactic that prevented d5 but it's not possible uh, it's it's just it's coming and it's gonna hurt and it's gonna expose uh, the the weak dark squares in in white's camp uh maybe in this one and th and and this diagonal that is supposed to bring you some attack it's not gonna work it's not gonna give anything so why start to uh, to back paddle here uh bishop f2 getting out of the x-ray here so that's also a prophylactic move he knew d5 was coming so he could not prevent it which would be sort of the real prophylactic uh, you would really uh, love to to be able to meet this with with, with e5 but here white just takes it black just takes it it's a, it's a central pawn so you have to take and here uh, black's got a fantastic spanish position uh, with uh, great activity uh, possibility to uh, to to really uh, annoy white with with some light uh, bishops uh, and, and and knights coming into the position so Black is, is is already better here. Rook e, bishop e4, um, preventing uh, knight coming here or to or move because of of the pin here. So you could say it's a prophylactic move, but it's also very. You just had to do something with the, the defense. And here, uh, black plays a very weird move. Um, the the obvious move here is rook b8. If you go rook b8 here, black is just clearly better i think um it's, it's it's clear that because even though you would like to have the the best move is probably to take but then you have a a, a clear bishop pair advantage um if you go something like this uh, then then you're already in 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 some sort of trouble here uh due to this one here and uh 
queen might be coming here and this knight might be bishop can come here and so on and this is just and there's also sometimes a square here so this is really not fun for uh, for white uh, and and i would definitely prefer black after rook b8 clear advantage instead they play this uh, weird move rook e5 and then it's already uh, Unclear, I think, uh, or not so clear at least. Rook c1 may not be the best. Rook c8, um, knight e2, and white is slowly starting to uh, to regroup, getting his pieces into uh, to good squares. Uh, and here comes another little bit weird move, queen e7. Um, I don't know what he's really doing here, Ding. I think he got very nervous. Uh, he he was sort of uh, saved by the bell uh, a little bit earlier. And queen d4. And here uh, the publisher is starting to play very well. Um, getting uh, he, his, his, his position was very... Uh, Unflexible and 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 sort of didn't didn't make a good impression and and now starting to 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 work together and uh, and this was the idea but the problem is this move and the rook is trapped and Ding has to uh, to 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 get uh, to sacrifice here which was not I think the plan uh, you could say here that. Black is is having at least some compensation. He's got the bishop pair. He's got uh, a, an extra pawn. Uh, but I think white is for choice. I would not like to play this against a computer. I think you would lose. Um, but uh, for humans, uh, playing an exchange up is definitely not easy. Um, it's often a good uh, prophylactic measure actually to, to sacrifice the exchange. Uh, this is uh, part of the, the things that the great prophylactic masters like uh, Petrosians, they're very good at, uh, or like Ulf Anderson, they are very good at sacrificing exchanges for, uh, for some positional compensation. And if you get a pawn and some compensation, then usually the practical uh, problems are rather great. We also see this in the Sicilian dragon opening and things like that. Um, so here, uh, rook uh, here, it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, knight here, of course, this was Black's idea. The problem is, and by the way, this is very important to, to notice, rooks are in general not very good if they are not active. So they, you have to try to activate your rooks whenever possible, uh, get them out there going. Um, and here it, it of course goes to the seven rank, um, which is always uh, nice. But it's also attacking this 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 uh, bishop here, um, and uh, and this is is makes a lot of a lot of sense of course. Bishop c5 uh, check. You have to respect that check. Um, and king h2, bishop c6. And here comes an important moment. Rook c7. And here's a rule of thumb. Here's a rule of thumb. Whenever you are uh, an exchange up, it's usually a good idea uh, to uh, exchange the other player's rook. Uh, and this is what uh, Nepomuchi does here. Uh, he, he exchanged the rooks. Uh, and and having uh, not having a rook is, is, is just a problem for the, the, the guy who, who's an exchange down. So this is, is textbook on how to play when you're an exchange up. Uh, you ex you ex you uh, exchange especially the rook, so and he had to to do that and uh, and of course black had to uh, to cover the pawn here. This was threatened by the rook, and you can see that black would really like to have a rook, put a rook somewhere like uh, like here, and, uh, and 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 white will be totally finished. Knight c three. Now that is a little bit wrong. And that's kind of funny. Uh, the, the white has to to be very smart here. Black is is having a concentration of uh, pieces here in the center. He has a very strong knight, two good bishops, but the pawns are a little bit weak and so on. And white has to find a way to uh, to get his pieces going. How does he do that? Um, and and I think something like rook d1 followed by rook d2 is is is, is better what, than what he, he did. It looks very natural to sort of block everything uh, with, with this move. Um, uh, the problem is that um, yeah, 
uh, here you at least you should you should definitely play this move uh, for sure uh, and and get uh, uh, the, the knight it has to go on a different route maybe to f4 uh, and exchange more pieces um, and and keeping the the the, the attack here uh, here he played a5 the king came in and um, and these kind of positions are they are very uh, very interesting um, I think black should be able to hold, but it's always very narrow if it's not very clear that, that this will hold. Uh, he goes here, and that looks very natural, uh, attacking uh, the pawn, um, and rooks you. And, and here, uh, I think, again, knight e2 is the best move. Uh, attacking here, and black has to find a way to defend, and, and white still has some options of, uh, of of trying to uh, to 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 do something i think they they were both very nervous and 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 so he played rugi 2 uh, attacking uh, the pawn here nice e1 uh, nice little move he should go back to c2 if he want to play but he did not want to play so they are all here and by the way doing something like this is really dangerous because then the e pawn will be uh, be a major force so that's also you don't <laughs> you it's it's nice to play uh, for a win but it's uh, when you when you risk losing you you have to be a little bit careful so I think uh, they, they were all happy to to make the draw here um, interesting uh, game very instructive uh, black kept uh, working against white's plan of opening the center and was definitely ready when it happened and um, and and this uh, big spoiler move knight c4 uh, just gave black actually an advantage directly uh, because and, and here we see that this bishop uh, is, is is in a wrong square uh, if if it was on c1 then there wouldn't be no problem you just cover e1 and uh, and be ready to play e5 on d5 which is what you want to to get an attack going on on the king side so the bishop was actually misplayed here and i think uh, the opening was a very big success for for, for ding but then uh, then he messed it up and uh, and it became interesting again the last game will be very interesting it's starting in 25 minutes from when i made this video this was dm talks remember to subscribe remember to like and put yourself on the email list we will have some sort of offer for people on the email list at some point so um, nothing to lose uh, by being on the email and we're not gonna spam you with a lot of uh, stupid offers so it, it will be something good i promise um, so this was dm talks thank you Oh, <laughs>